thank you for joining us. You're watching Brockton Community Access in conjunction with WATD 95.9 FM. My name is Mark Lindy and I am your host moderator for this evening. I'm joined here with Kevin Tarchi, the news anchor and radio host from WATD. Thanks for being here, Kevin. Absolutely, sir. Um, we are in election 2015. The candidates for a councilor at large for the city of Brockton, all 13 of them are here in BCA studios tonight. We're going to start off with opening statements. We did a little drawing prior to uh, the start of the debate, and we're going to go right in order. Everybody gets a minute to introduce themselves and tell you who they are. So we're going to start with number one, who drew first, Michael Zarella. Michael, walk up to the microphone, and uh, we will hear from you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael Zarella. I'm running for city councilor at large. Thank you to the BCA studio. All everyone here tonight, um, all the candidates, all the incumbent councilmen and women as well. I'm running for council at large because I've seen a lot of things go on in the city that I know are wrong and we need help. So I want to be there to fight for all the constituents. <clears throat> I'm a married father of two. I have a home in the Brookfield section of Brockton. I grew up in Campello. I've worked for the past eight years for the Department of Correction employed as a correction officer for our state. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Next up uh, is Gary Keith, candidate for Councilor at Large. Good evening. Um, I want to thank you, Mark and uh, Kevin, for having us here and doing this, um, this forum for us tonight. My name is Gary Keith, and uh, this is my second time running for City Council at Large here in the great city of Brockton. I'm married uh, to my wife, Kathy, of 29 years. We have seven kids that we have raised here in the city. And uh, I'm a U.S. Army veteran. I have an extensive law uh, background. And uh, I sit currently on the planning board and the zoning board of appeals for the city of Brockton right now. And I really would like your vote this year, number 10 on the ballot. Again, uh, after the last year's, uh, two years ago, the election, I said I was not going to go quietly into the dock. I'm back again to try to serve you here in the city. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you, Gary. Next up uh, in uh, the order that we drew is Susan DeCastro. Good evening. My name is Susan DeCastro, and I'm a candidate for the open seat, the open counselor at large seat on the Brockton City Council. I'd like to thank Mark Lindy, Kevin Tachi, and everyone at Brockton Community Access for, host for hosting this debate tonight. I'm a 25-year resident of the city of Brockton. I moved here 25 years ago, and I married my husband, John Tuig. We're raising our two sons here in Brockton, and I'm proud to be a resident of Brockton. As an attorney for 30 years, as a, uh, a former member, I spent five years on the Brockton Planning Board and two years on the Zoning Board of Appeals. As a former member of those two boards, I have the passion, the experience, and the training to help Brockton, and I want to help Brockton. Um, I would like everyone's votes, and I would ask you to vote number nine on number nine on the ballot. Please vote number nine for Nicastro. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, next up is Moses Rodriguez. Good evening, and uh, thank you, Mark and Kevin, for uh, hosting us, and thank you, everybody that's actually here tonight uh, to be a part of this. It's wonderful that we have all these individuals who are willing to participate in the process here in Brockton. Uh, my name is Moses Rodriguez, and I've been a, a resident of the city of Brockton for 37 years, and I'm running for re-election. I was privileged enough to be elected last, uh, last election term, and it's been a privilege and an honor to serve you, and I'm looking for that privilege and honor to return to the City Council again for two more years. Uh, our city has some serious issues, and we require serious individuals to help uh, Brocktonians resolve those issues, and that's why I'm running for re-election. I'm a homeowner. I have a family here in this city. I believe in this city. I possess uh, the community know-how to make our city better, so please, I'm number two on the ballot. In, uh, on September 22nd, and please vote for me. Thank you. Thank you, Moses. Um, next up, number five, is Scott Hall. Hi, I'm um, Scott Hall. Um, I've been a resident of the city all my life. I was born and raised in the Lithuanian Village section of Brockton. Um, 
I've got 15 years of uh, computer programming experience. I basically solve problems. I'm looking to solve some of the city's most difficult problems. Um, I genuinely, genuinely care about the residents of Brockton. I'm number 12 on the ballot. Um, I just want to say one of the things that really concerns me is this power plant issue and the, the from what I'm hearing, the, the D, it's going to be run by diesel now. And I think the municipal water supply um, has enough probable carcinogens within the water supply. And I don't like the idea of the power plant. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Um, Scott is number five. Number six is Shane Barnes. <coughs> Good evening, everyone at home, friends, neighbors, residents. Thank you very much to uh, Kevin and Mark for hosting this forum, to my esteemed colleagues in government, and to my friends, the other candidates here for a councillor at large. Um, I say good evening. Uh, my name is Shana Barnes. I am currently one of your four city councillors at large, and like Moses, uh, two years ago, I was fortunate and blessed enough to have earned the vote to win uh, one of the seats on the council. And since January. I tried to make sure that I learned, that I paid attention from the veterans on the council. I tried to make sure that I was aware of what was going on, and I contributed uh, as I felt appropriate. In my second term, if I'm lucky enough to get your vote again in September, September 22nd, I'm number eight on your ballot. I plan to um, start some new initiatives. And I will come before you later to discuss some of those, but I will ask for now that you consider me for your vote, September 22nd, number 8, Shana Barnes, Brockton, Brockton City Councilor at Large. Thank you. Thank you, Shana. Next up is uh, Wynn Farwell. Oh, good evening to all of you uh, this evening who are watching. I'm Wynn Farwell, and I have been blessed to have privileges that are extended to very few. I served as your mayor for four years. I served on the school committee for 10 years. I served on the police department with many fine officers, men and women. And I'm running because I know our city can do better. We need safe streets and neighborhoods and playgrounds for our children. We need a strong and effective school system. And we certainly need an adequate public safety system, fire and police, that will protect the citizens of this city. There's only one promise I'm going to make to you. I'll take each issue as it comes before the council if I'm elected. I'll weigh all of the evidence and the facts. I'll do the research. I'll talk with constituents. And I'll make the best possible decision I can to move the city forward. Thank you very much for your consideration. I'm number three in the ballot. And again, I cannot thank you enough for the privilege of having served you before in public life. Thank you, Wynn. Next up is uh, Paul Beckner. Oh, no, not him again. Yes, I'm on the ballot again. I'd like to first thank everyone who supported me in the past two elections, for Councilor Lodge and uh, State Representative. I truly appreciate your loyal support. The reason that I'm even on the ballot this year is because a couple of loyal friends gathered the required signatures. Honestly, I'm tired of people who d just don't give a shit. A giant thank you to the few of you that do care and are tuning in tonight. The issues have not changed. Crime and murder horrible senior living areas, the power plant, the desalinization plant, Main Street, taxes, and now a casino. Those of you who pay attention know how I feel. I don't have time to explain my positions tonight again. They haven't changed. I will have some answers and solutions for you to ponder on another day. Right now, I must respectfully say good night, as today is my son's 21st birthday, and my wife and I are taking him to dinner. This year, my family comes first. I would like to thank those who uh, put the event together tonight and to the very capable counselors and uh, the people running for office this year. And uh, maybe I'll see you soon. God bless. Okay. We are going to go to uh, next, Craig Pina. Good evening. My name is Craig Pina, and I'm running for counselor at large once again. I ran uh, two years ago, back uh, in 2013. There were 
15 candidates for counselor at large, another large field. And uh, I'm running again because two years ago I saw some issues facing the city, and I don't, I don't think they've changed much. I think we need to, we need to move the city forward uh, by attracting more businesses and preserving our, our superior public education system. I've been in Brockton for my entire life, uh, almost 45 years. I've been involved in the city in, in, with various organizations in leadership positions uh, for about 25 years. Uh, what we're going to see tonight is a bunch of people who really do care about the city. Um, I may take issue to, to, the, to the last comment about people not caring, but I, th I, I think everyone here does care. The difference what we're going to see is who has a grasp of the issues and what are their plans to tackle the issues. So my, I'm number three on the ballot. Cra I'm number three. Number seven on the ballot, Craig Pina for uh, Councilor at Large. Thank you, Craig. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure I know where I am. We were just Craig. So number ten is Trevor Packer. Good evening, uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Trevor Packard, uh, candidate for Councilor at Large here. First of all, I would like to thank Mark and uh, Kevin and the entire staff here at BCA for putting this forum on to educate the people about the uh, issues and the people running. Um, I am a fifth generation Brocktonian from a hardworking middle class family. Uh, my grandmother served on the city council for 16 years. Um, a big issue that I hear when I go out and knock on doors to people is um, they asked me about my youth and my inexperience, and uh, yes, I am 21 years old. Um, uh, but I'm locally educated here in Brockton, uh, Brockton High School, Massasoit Community College, and Bridgewater State. So I know what a great uh, public education can, can do for just one, one uh, person. Um, I currently work with a nonprofit organization, Coaching for Change, up at Brockton High School. Uh, we teach poverty stricken and non, and um, poverty stricken kids how to be self-reliant with um, economics. Um, I would just like to ask you to vote for me on September 22nd, Trevor Packard, uh, number 11 on uh, the Councilor Lodge ballot. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Um, next up would be Doreen Smith. Thank you. Um, good evening. My name is Doreen Smith. Um, thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Mark, and thank you for all the candidates that are here tonight. Um, I am a resident of Brockton. I'm an education specialist. I am a former special needs teacher. I work for the Department of Education presently. Um, I do, I have been born, in, I was born in Brockton. Um, my family, my sisters and brothers were sent into foster care. I graduated Simmons on a 100% financial aid package and I have been giving back to the city and the state for over 30 years, volunteering, and now I'm running for public office. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doris. Uh, next would be Robert Sullivan. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Robert Sullivan. I want to thank Mark and, and Kevin for uh, hosting this event tonight. Um, I proudly uh, come before you as a counselor at large, serving the entire city of Brockton, all seven wards, all 28 precincts for the last 10 years. Uh, I am a dedicated, vocal, and productive member of the, of the Brockton City Council. I proudly serve. I'm a Brockton guy. My wife's from Brockton. Uh, we're raising our three wonderful children here in the city, the city of champions. You need proven leadership and, uh, and experience, I think, during tough economic times. And I think uh, some of the things that I've done over the last 10 years that have really benefited the residents of the city of Brockton, I'm going to talk about later today. But I have specifically uh, uh, done some ordinances that benefit uh, res residential real estate tax breaks for the veterans and the seniors. I've advocated uh, for fiscal measures that have saved hundreds of thousands of dollars for the city of Brock and the streetlight acquisition. I've been an advocate at all times because we're public servants for businesses, residents, and of course the city employees. So again, I'm number one on the ballot. My name is Robert Sullivan. I respectfully and humbly ask for your vote on September 22nd. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. And uh, last but not least in the uh, drawing is Adias Pierre. Good evening. My name is Adias Pierre and I'm running for City Council at large. I have been living in Brockton for more than 20 years. I want to thank you, Mark and Kevin, for the opportunity, or my opponent, thank you, for being here tonight. I believe we're going to have a good, respectful, and democratic conversation. I'm a former police officer. I'm working now for Plymouth County Sheriff Department. I know what it takes to, to solve the crime, because I deal with it almost every day. So on September 22nd, Please give me a chance. I'm number five on the ballot because the city is in trouble, and I believe I have a lot to offer. I don't want to be among the people that are complaining, but I want to be part of the solution. Please, September 22nd, 
give me a vote, and I'm, I'm pleased to ask you, I would like to serve you as your next city councilor. Thank you. Thank you, Addis, and thank you all for uh, being here and staying. We're going to start off with, um, we're going to go in the order this way, and then I'll flip it around. Kevin has the first question. I'll start with Mr. Solomon. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. First and foremost, uh, Councillor, tell the folks at home as to why you deserve another term on the City Council. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, again, my name is Robert Sullivan, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 I love uh, serving the residents of the City of Brockton, and I have been elected by my peers two times to be the City Council President in 2008 and 2014. Um, and, you know, the way I, I, I treat it is it's, 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 it's a duty and an honor. When I knock on your door and respectfully ask for your vote, it's to be your voice, to be your public servant at City Hall. And I think I've done a good job. I've, I've been reelected five times here, and uh, I respectfully ask uh, to continue the fight. I've been very vocal in the City Council, and I'm, I'm asking you on September 22nd, you have four votes. And I'm asking for one of those four votes because I, I think the job needs to continue. During tough economic times, you really need someone that has uh, experience and proven leadership. Uh, I have a law degree. I have an MBA. But ultimately, I'm a Brockton guy. And when people say, why do you stay in Brockton? It's my home. It's your home. It's our home. And we need to have the right people in place. And I will continue to work if I'm reelected. Thank you. Okay. Next would be Moses Rodriguez. Same question, Mr. Rodriguez. Why do you deserve another term on the City Council? Well, I, uh, I, do, I believe that I actually was able to bring uh, a different take to city government. Uh, I'm one of the very first uh, individuals elected to uh, city council who uh, possessed a second language skill. Uh, I actually have been able to bring quite a few folks that have been kept out of the, out of the system uh, into city government to basically voice their concern. Um, Bob and I were just talking about this a few minutes ago. It's a lot easier just to... Uh, get along to go, to, to go along um, because if you think about it, it's so much easier just to rubber stamp everything and become, you know, and continue to be friends with everyone. But that's not the reason why the people of Brockton put us there. They put us there because they want us to make the, the, the tough choices. They want us to be able to speak on their behalf. This is a representative form of government. And they expect us not to be uh, rubber stampers and rubber stamp everything that's actually proposed to us. That's why I believe, as it's been said, that the, the job hasn't been completed. Uh, I ask you for an opportunity to go back and, uh, and have an opportunity to serve you again uh, because we need to do what we can to continue to grow and, and move the city in the right direction. Okay, next one, Farwell. Mr. Farwell, you, in your opening statement, kind of gave a list of the, I mean, you ran, you were uh, mayor, school committee, why would you run for city council? Why not run for mayor? Well, I've been the mayor. I enjoyed every moment of it, but I think now we've reached a point in the city's history where someone with my background and experience and, and skills at putting together budgets and evaluating public safety issues and working to ensure we have a strong and effective school system, I think it's really important to have someone with my background on the legislative branch of the city. And I uh, am more interested now than I ever was because it seems that the very same issues that confronted us when I was in office before have now recycled and come back. Financial management, the issue of the bond rating, the issue of having sufficient revenues to fund the critical services that we need in this city. That's where I want to focus. I want to be a proactive counselor. I want to get involved in the issues, and I want to take the past experience I have to make a difference in the city of Brockton. I'll work with the mayor, whomever it is, and with everyone else to be able to accomplish that. No one has a corner on all of the right ideas, but collectively we can make a big difference. Thank you. Next would be Adios Pierre. Hello, Mr. Pierre. How are you? I'm doing good, sir. Thank you. Uh, have you ever held office here in, in Brockton before? No, sir. Why, why run for at large? Why not run for like school committee or ward council just to kind of be electable? Thank you, sir. I believe Brockton is one. And I would love to give the opportunity to all Bogdanians to vote for me because I know I can help them. Brockton is in trouble. Public safety is a very big issue in the city and drug overdose as well. So you need someone with experience like me who will deal with that, those issues. As a law enforcement background, I know exactly what it takes to solve those problems. So I don't want to be part of the city. I want to make sure I serve my whole city because I've been living in the city for more than 21 years. My kids are in school in the city. I believe I have exactly what it takes 
to solve those issues. And when I become the next city councillor, I will advocate for our youth to have sports after school program. That's why I'm here tonight, and I believe I'm way qualified. I'm your shorts for September 22nd. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Michael Zarella. Same question to you, Mr. Zarella. Have you been elected to office before? No, sir. So why not run for a school committee or for ward council, <clears throat> just to kind of be electable? I think, first off, I ran council at large because I know more people throughout the whole city. I feel like I know the city more as a whole. I'm new to my ward. I've only lived there for five years. So I felt like having the experience throughout the whole city would have helped me to, uh, to be better in line with what the people's thoughts and what they need for the whole city. Um, I think we have one of the most diverse populations in Massachusetts. And, you know, I want to help not just, not just the longtime Brocktonians, but also the people in the Cape Verdean community, the Haitian community, anyone that needs help. I'll go to any neighborhood, any street. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Okay, uh, Craig Pina. Mr. Pina, have you been elected in the uh, in the city before? No, I have not. Why not? Why not run for a small office like school committee or run for ward councilor? Um, as I've said before, I, I ran two years ago in 2013 uh, for councilor at large, and those, it was the same reason. I uh, my my roots are in the entire city. I grew up in the Ashfield area on Dandy Road, uh, where my family where my family grew up, and I spent 10 years uh, raising my family in the in the Cardinal Spellman area on Debbie Road. Uh, now I live on the, on the west side near West, we're near west Middle School. Um, I've been involved in organizations throughout the city helping, helping uh, our youth, advocating for our youth, advocating for uh, special needs students, uh, creating a first of its kind in the world unified sports program for the city of Brockton. Uh, I've, also, I've also been an advocate for business through the Chamber of Commerce for over 20 years. I believe that I have what it takes. I believe I, I know the issues. I have a, a firm grasp of the issues, uh, and I, uh, this, this is where I think I should be. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, Shana Barnes. Shana, why do you deserve to be reelected in the second term? Well, first of all, thank you for that question. Um, I think that I have proven that I am an effective counselor. I think that um, I've proven that I could be a voice for the people. When anybody calls me or they contact me, I make sure that I get back to them. That's the minimum. That's the minimum a public servant can do is to respond to someone's concern. And I feel that I have been able to take in those concerns and to, uh, to give them back to the council and to vote effectively. I, there have been several votes that I've taken where I've been uh, the lone vote, a, a dissenting vote sometimes, but I felt that it was right. And I feel that when I go into that chamber with my materials, I make sure that I have read my materials, that I understand, and that I go in there with any information or any kind of concerns that people have brought to me. So um, I would be so blessed to be able to do that again and to continue to do that for you because, like I said, I feel that I have proven that that is what um, my role is on the council, to be the voice of the citizens of Brockton. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Shana. Uh, Susan Castro. Hello, Susan. Susan, I know you've served on the planning board. Have you been elected to an office before? I have not. I guess I'm a virgin. Okay. So I guess the question would be why not try to go for school committee or ward council to kind of get elected, be electable? Well, I thought about the various options, the school committee, uh, the ward that I live in, which would be ward four, or at large. And at the end of the day, I reflected on my experience, my five years on the planning board and my two years on the zoning board of appeals. And on both of those boards, um, I reviewed applications for properties that are located all over the city. And I kind of, I kind of got used to a citywide approach. I visited nearly all of the properties that I, I um, was asked to decide on. And so I got to know the city like I hadn't known it before. Um, and so at the end of the day, I thought, having had a citywide approach, that at large um, best met my abilities and my willingness to serve. Also, too, I'm interested in issues facing the entire city. Thank you, Susan. Okay. <clears throat> By the way, I'll just remind everybody, if I'm holding up two hands, it's usually 10 seconds. Five is one. If you can't see Jay, I'm kind of giving cues as okay. well. Um, Gary Keith would be next. Hello, Mr. Keith. Uh, have you been elected to office before? Um, I held a 
position with uh, as a chairperson for the Massachusetts State uh, Head Start program. Were you elected to office? Uh, yes, I was. Okay. Uh, why do you want to run for uh, school? Why do you want to run for at large, and why not run for like school committee or ward council here in the city? Well, two years ago I ran for um, councilor at large for the first time. Um, why I didn't pick the ward councilor, I, I can't really tell you that. But since I jumped into the whole pond the first time, basically I decided to run again this time here. Um, the reason why I want to represent the whole city is because on the new slogan on my new cards is I am Brockton. And what that means basically is that I can relate to every walk of life that sits here and that sleeps within the borders of, of Brockton. Whether you're homeless, whether you're unemployed, whether you're a six-figure income, whether you're, uh, no matter what it is, whether you're on food stamps, welfare, I've been there and I can understand the plight and the issues that they have. And I want to represent the city as best I can and represent those people also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to go to Trevor Packard. Trevor, same question to you. Why not run for school committee or ward council just to get your feet yeah, wet? Of course, thank you. Uh, that's actually a question I get a lot when I first talk to people. Um, being very young, they say, why not throw your hand in the ring in a lower position, try to win your way in and work your way up. And uh, to that I can say, my youth is really an asset citywide. People always tell me, well, you know, it takes a lot. You have to go door to door, every single neighborhood. You have to talk to 100,000 people. You have to meet the needs of everybody in the entire city. But I have the youth, I have the energy, I have the time, and I have the passion to really cover the ground citywide. And I think that the issues that face us today are issues that are going to face us 20, 30 years from now, when I'm still here in Brockton, raising a family, living here. A lot of people in my generation that I go to school with, they grow up and they say, man, I can't wait to graduate and get out of Brockton, get out of here, go to Easton, go to Abington, go to a Bridgewater. And I've always said, wow, I can't wait to graduate from this great school system locally educated and I can't wait to make Brockton better and that's exactly what I will do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Scott Hall. Same question, Scott. Why not run for school committee or ward council just to kind of get your feet wet? Um, I think if I was to run for school committee, well, I'd be more compelled to run for school committee if I had children in the school system and I was a parent. Um, maybe at a later date I'll try that. Um, Council at large just seems like the thing to do for me right now. There's a lot of issues that I'm very concerned about and they're across the whole city. One thing I want to say is we desperately need a surplus in the, in the budget in the city. And it, it alarms me that year after year we have to grapple with just balancing the budget. And I want to see us all collectively put our heads together and solve these problems of not having enough money in the budget. Thank Thanks you, for your time. Okay, and uh, Doris Smith, number 12 this time, so okay. uh, it's not 13. S same question. Okay. Why run for at large? Why, why not run for school committee or ward council? Well, um, I live in Ward 5, and I'm supporting a candidate uh, that's running for city council, and I did not want to split the votes up for the people of color and our ward. And also, um, I have been elected to the executive board of the Boston Teachers Union and also elected to the Brockton Democratic City Committee. So um, I chose to run citywide, and that is why. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask the next question, and uh, I'm going to give everybody a minute to respond. I'm going to start with Shana Barnes. So the question I'm going to ask while you're walking up there is, um, what are your unique qualifications to be a city councilor, to be an elected office? I'm going to ask everybody the same question. Okay. Thank you again for the question. Um, my uniqueness, I think, being the first African-American female to have already been elected and to be serving as your current uh, city councilor at large. I came to the council with a new perspective. I feel that I have shared that. I feel that I have been uh, as representative as I can be for my neighbors and my friends and the residents of Brockton uh, and also for myself as a resident. I came there with, uh, tried to give some common sense 
uh, approach to some real issues that we were dealing with. And um, I'm not through with that yet. I have some initiatives that I want to start. And those are actually some unique ideas that um, have not been tried here before. So if given the opportunity to be able to serve a second term, I will definitely make sure that those uh, projects come to fruition. And um, I, that's about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next would be Susan Castro. And the question is my unique qualifications for this position. Yes. Well, first of all, I've lived here 25 years. I've married a resident of five generations. His family is here. We've ra we're raising our children here, and we've been active um, in all kinds of athletic endeavors since our children were little. Um, I am an attorney for more than 30 years. My practice focuses on real estate and business. I, I review contracts all the time. Um, it seems like the city council looks at an awful lot of contracts. Um, I'm also, as I mentioned earlier, um, a five-year veteran of the Planning Board and a two-year veteran of the Zoning Board of Appeals, which was a wonderful education in how the city works and, um, and also in how City Hall works. Um, I think all of these experiences and the skills that I have in my professional life uniquely qualify me to do this important job, especially at this time in the city. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go in different order. I'm going to ask Michael Zarella, same question. What makes you uniquely qualified to be a city councilor? I think what qualifies me to be a city councilor is my background. Um, third generation Brocktonian. My grandparents immigrated here from Italy in the 1920s and since then we've just been raising our family. Um, I, I've been here, I've gone to school, I've right up from elementary through Brockton High, Massasoit Community College. I joined the workforce after that, seven years for a Boston Finance Company, the past eight years in law enforcement for the Department of Correction. I like to keep a diverse group of friends and in my family as well. And I think that's what makes me a good candidate because I can relate to a lot of people and I have a background in Brockton and throughout the state. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, next would be Craig Pina. Unique. What makes you uniquely qualified? Well, I'm qualified? a great guy. That's, that makes me unique. But the, <laughs> in all seriousness, uh, my, my unique qualification is my, my history in building collaborations. Uh, when I worked with Special Olympics Massachusetts, I, 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 I was able to, to overcome roadblocks by building collaborations between Special Olympics Massachusetts, the city, city government, uh, Brockton Public Schools, and business in the city to, pr to provide that, that program that lasted a, a, quite a long time. It was a precursor to the Boxer Buddies in the city of Brockton. What I plan to do is to, to, to make our budget work better for programs like the Council on Aging, uh, Veterans Affairs, and, uh, and, and the libraries to, through collaborations collaborations with the Veterans Administration and the State Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, collaborations uh, for, for school sports, like uh, my, my, my fellow candidate Trevor Packard mentioned, I've, uh, Coaching for Change, I've been involved uh, in talks with Marquise Taylor, who's, who's the director of Coaching for Change, and uh, this, that's a unique program, and it's facing a lot of the same roadblocks that I faced with Special Olympics, and I believe I can help them, which increases middle, middle school sports act, uh, participation, not only in middle schools, but in high school and colleges. Okay, thank you, Craig. Um, next up, Gary Keith. Same question. Uh, what makes you uniquely qualified to be a city councilor? Well, sir, first of all, from raising a large family here in the city, um, actually, I wore a lot of hats. But being a, a U.S. veteran of the 82nd Airborne, basically at that point there, we've always uh, did things as a team. Okay, and I, what Bob said earlier is that we have, we need strong leadership. Okay, and I'm just one part of the puzzle. I think that we do have some strong leadership, but I think that we need to also put some other pieces to that. I think that I'm a team player, but I'm also a person that I can think outside the box on my own when I have to. But uh, I can definitely be in addition to what we have right now um, with the leadership that we do have from one of the, uh, some, some of the incumbents that we have right now. I think that I would actually be able to help push Brockton forward uh, along with what we have right now. I think they need some other pieces to the puzzle to actually keep rocking going. Thank you, Gary. Um, Trevor Packard, same question. Uh, what makes you uniquely qualified to be a city council? Uh, well, I think uh, the one thing that makes me glaringly unique here is obviously my age, and I've touched upon it a few times. 
Um, but being so young, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bridge gaps between generations. A lot of people say, well, you're young, you're running for a certain demographic, but I'm not. I know where the city came, uh, comes from. I know who built this city. I know the important issues that face everybody in the city. And one big thing for me is being young, um, again, I'm going to be here 20, 30 years from now. So over-borrowing, over-spending today affects me, my family, my, my peers, and the people that I care about 20, 30 years down the line. Um, I would say that being a fifth generation Brocktonian is also unique. Uh, my family also helped build this city to what it is today, and I, I hope to carry on the legacy and push the city forward in a new, better direction. Thank you. I'm going to ask Scott Hall the same question. What makes you unique or what unique characteristics do you have to bring to the office? Well, um, I believe I'm the only computer programmer on the ballot. Um, I've held positions anywhere from being an architect to an analyst. I'm very analytical. Um, I've had to solve enterprise level uh, problems um, throughout. I've made a career out of it. Um, I do a lot of video that's definitely unique. I'm always, I always have a video camera in my backpack. Um, I just like I'll just volunteer for anything at the, the cable access, you know, whether it be um, one show or another, it doesn't matter, you know, how controversial it is. I feel like everybody has a right to their opinion and deserves to have their voice heard. Um, thanks for your time. Thank you. Uh, Dory Smith, um, your unique qualifications to be a city council. Um, thank you, Mark. Um, I have been in leadership and membership positions in Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority as a chair of the uh, Black Caucus for the Boston Teachers Union, national vice president of the American Federation of Teachers Black Caucus. I've door knocked and phone banked in all the neighborhoods in Brockton for seven years every weekend. I've been a Democratic State Committee chairwoman for two years. I am presently serving as a secretary for the Brockton Democrats. And I think that's about it. Oh, and I've been an officer and a member in the Black Political Task Force and Black Educators Alliance of Massachusetts. Thank you, Doris. Um, we're going to go to the same question for uh, Robert Sullivan. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a son of, uh, of a teacher and a, and a nurse, uh, and they're living on a fixed income. I have a, a senior citizen parents. Uh, I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a concerned resident. I'm the only one up here uh, that has served on the city council for 10 years. I have a law degree. I've drafted uh, legislation, uh, bylaws, and ordinances. I serve as the um, Brockton representative to the Plymouth County Advisory Board since Jim Harrington, when he was mayor, put me on. I volunteer my time. I'm on the board of directors for Good Samaritan, the former Cardinal Cushing Hospital, also uh, St. Joseph's Manor Nursing Home. So giving back to the city of Brockton that's given my family so much is something that I can appreciate. But I also understand what it means to work hard. I'm a business owner. I'm also uh, someone that throws himself in for good or for bad. Uh, and does the right thing. I think you have to remember the two most important things is your reputation and your family. And you always strive for uh, working above board and on your principles. I've done that, and I think it's something that, that, that needs to continue on the City Council, Mark and Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mo uh, Moses Rodriguez. Thank you, Mark. Um, I believe one of the, uh, what I bring to the City Council is different uh, take. Uh, I'm an immigrant somebody that immigrated to this country uh, at a very young age with my parents. I was able to do a variety of things because I had the help from a, from a, a good home uh, that led me to serve in the United States Navy here in the United States. I bring a different perspective to the City Council because I'm able to gap the different uh, immigrant groups that actually live in the city they call the city home. I've worked openly with everyone. I believe that you need to have that kind of a voice in city government because Brockton is a city of immigrants, but you know what? It's not going to take one group of people to do it. It's going to take a variety of folks to bring everybody together, to work together for the common good of the city. And I've done that. I went to City Hall, as I said earlier, not just to get along with people. I went here to represent you and your voice, and I'll continue to do that. Thank you, Moses. And that is Pierre. Oh, I'm sorry, Wynn Farwell.
I think the, uh, the uniqueness of my candidacy is having served as mayor, having been a police officer out on the streets of Brockton, having been a member of the school committee. I understand and I get municipal finance and municipal government. I understand school funding, school funding formulas. I understand the devastating effect that crime and drugs have on families in this city. And I think applying all of that experience and all of that knowledge and working with fellow counselors and with neighborhood groups, I think we can make a big, big difference on addressing the issues that face the city. It's not going to be easy. There are no magic wands to wave. But if we listen to one another and we work with, with, with one another, we're going to make a difference. And I, again, thank the citizens for giving me the honor of serving in those past positions. And I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and use that experience and make a difference if I'm elected councilor at large. Thank you. And Adios Pierre. Thank you, Matt. Uh, my qualification to be city councilor, when I see young people in jail where I work in Plymouth, I believe they don't believe to, uh, to jail, they believe uh, they belong to school. So I'm doing it for my children, for your children, to inspire them, to let them know sky should be their limit. They can do better than that, than drug and illegal guns. I'm an immigrant. When I immigrated here uh, over 20 years ago, I worked very hard. I go to school. I win a degree in criminal justice. I have a background as a police officer. I involved to so many nonprofit organizations. I'm a servant. So I believe I have a lot to offer to these people and young people especially, when they, if they make a mistake, they went to jail. When they get released, we need to give them a chance to reintegrate in the society. That's what I'm fighting for. So I believe I'm qualified to serve the city of Brockton. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, a question from Kevin. Who we going first? Um, we're going to start with Doris. Doris? This is, this is a question I think that's on every Brocktonian's mind. We saw what happened yesterday, number of incidents regarding gun violence. The biggest problem that the city is dealing with is gun violence, drug dealing, crime. It's a big concern. Uh, what needs to be done to make the city streets safer? Well, the question that you asked me, Kevin, is that's the mayor's job. That's the mayor's job to come up with that plan, to bring it forth to the city council, and for us to make suggestions as to how he wants to guard the city and protect the city. But well, so, what suggestions would so, you make to the mayor? So at this point, um, I believe that what we do need, we need a more diversified police department, representative, reflective of the community. Mm -hmm. We need more boots on the ground and um, possibly st uh, help from other agencies, state and federal. Next. Okay, Thank next you. would be Scott Hall. Scott Hall, same question. What do you feel needs to be done to, to make the city streets safer? I think we need to engage the constituency in more uh, community activities. Community involvement is a big part of keeping crime, rate, crime rates down. When everybody knows each other and everybody's friendly towards each other, there's less likely going to be problems. Um, I think some of the policies we have in place right now uh, cause people to commit crimes. Um, I just think uh, we need to reduce the, the the dropout rate in the school system as well a lot of these children are just not wanting to go to school for one reason or another and that's definitely an issue with all this gang violence going on. Trevor. Same question to you Trevor. What, need, what do you feel needs to be done to make the city streets safer? Thank you. Well uh, first of all public safety is number one on my agenda as I think it is every Brownsonian. <laughs> Um, first, I think we need overall more boots on uh, the, the, the uh, uh, ground. If we have more police officers out there, we can fight the crime. We also need to engage in community activities, community policing, neighborhood watches, get the citizens really involved. When the citizens are, are um, involved and they can report crimes, then they can stop crimes. 
Um, also, the program that I work for, Coaching for Change, is another long-term solution that I would have. Um, it's privately funded, uh, uses state grants. Um, we actually have 100% on-time graduation, and what we do is we foster kids to um, better their, their uh, lives, not get into the gang life, not get into the drug life, um, and stay on a right track, uh, get a job, be economically self-reliant, and um, just overall be a better member of the Brockton community. Thank you, Gary. Mr. Keith. Yes. Same question to you, sir. What do you think needs to be done in order to make the city streets safer? Well, well first of all, I think the mayor is actually going in the right direction right now with us having uh, some officers getting ready to graduate from the class, and they're actually doing some application process right now to uh, add to the uh, police ranks. That's something that's going to take time. But I do believe that uh, we do need the additional police officers, and we need to put a class in after that and find the money for that. But I also think that we need to find some resources to um, to fund our youth programs, okay, because I think that uh, – our youth basically being more active with after school sports like the after dark program and things like that, mentoring programs, what actually ties in with uh, public safety. Because if they're more active doing the right thing, then they won't be out there doing the wrong thing. And, um, but definitely more police in there and I'd be able to work with the mayor and any other organization to find the money that we need to fund any uh, police officers to put them into the uh, academy. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Well, of course, the, uh, the number one concern right now, and as a council at large, uh, serving the whole city and you go to the different ward meetings, people are afraid, and, uh, and rightfully so. Crime is up, murder rate is, is off the charts. Um, some of the things that I've done as a city councilor is, is, is 10 ratified, 10 different budgets. Um, agreed to hire uh, police officers, but there's a misnomer that these new police officers are going to be able to hit the streets uh, running. Uh, they need to have the, the, the training, they need to have the vehicles. We've approved uh, the acquisition and purchase of, of new cruisers, um, but we also need to not just fill retired spots, but bring on new police officers, bring on new fire. But ultimately, uh, all crime is, is, is connected to drugs, right? Either prescription drugs, uh, the opiate epidemic right now. So we need to work collaboratively. Uh, we need to be able to educate the youth. We need to be able to, uh, to combat it. Uh, as was stated today, the neighborhood watch crime, it needs to continue. And we need to continue to have the right people in place and uh, not just rubber stamp, as my colleague said, but to work for the best interests of the city of Brock. And even if that means going against the mayor. Thank you. Mr. Rodriguez. Same question. So what needs to be done to make the, the city streets safer? I actually want to I, I put in a plug to the uh, men and women in the uh, Brockton Police Department. I, have, I, I believe we have one of the best police departments in the, uh, in the state, to be honest you, with you, if not in the country. Because to me, the answer is not throwing police at the problem. Uh, we, have, we now have probably more police than we've had in quite some time in the city, and the crime is still going up. I believe what we need to do is go back to basics. It was mentioned here that we need to kind of uh, revitalize the entire uh, uh, crime watch in the neighborhoods, but we need to bring the community together. We need to bring the, the community and the police together to have a serious dialogue because throwing police and throwing money at, a, a, at the crime hasn't solved it. And, you know, you, all you got to do is open the newspaper and figure out that it's not working. So I think we need to go back to basics and bring the community and the police together and law enforcement together to have a real discussion on how to best solve the, uh, the crime problems in the city. Just a follow up. Same question. What needs to be done to make the city streets safer? I think at the end of every fiscal year, the city should take a look at those monies that are appropriated but not expended or encumbered. And that those funds should be carved out and put in a separate fund to bring on additional police officers. I'd like to see a three to five year master plan on how we can increase the personnel in the police department by taking a look at who's going to be retiring, anticipated retirements over those three to five years, because when an officer retires, they're at the higher level of the wage scale. The new officer coming in is going to be at the lower end of the wage scale. So there are some savings there that might give us an opportunity to bring on additional officers. We need a strong and effective program in the schools because the police cannot be seen as the enemy by young people. Police have got to be seen as someone you can trust, you can relate to, and you can go to if you have a problem. And lastly, I think the officers need to be a little bit like us. Get out of the cruiser, knock on doors, and build relationships with people. You can have a thousand police officers in this city. If they're not getting along with the residents, fortunately they are now, then you're going to have a problem. Okay. 
Just appear. Same question. What needs to be done to make the city streets safer? Yeah, Kevin, as, as you can see on my opening, almost the same thing about public safety. It's not about how many police officers that we have. It could be 200, 300. It's the strategy that we use. Community policing, that's what I will advocate for. Those police officers need to get out of the cruisers to go to the neighborhood. Most of the time, the residents see the uh, police officer as the enemy. They need to know that if they, if one of them, they, they need to go to the neighborhood, know the people that live in the city. So if we have it, we'll have a safe Brockton. Because most of the time, it's the same people committing the crime over and over. Same people. They get arrested now today. The, the drug dealer, they have the money. They bail themselves out two more in the street committing the same crime. I believe, as a citizen of Brockton, we need to get together to, uh, to have an honest conversation with the judge to be tougher on the criminal. Because by experience I'm talking, the same people committed the crime over and over. Thank you. Mr. Zarella. Same question to you, sir. Yes, sir. Public safety is a golden question right now in our city. Um, I think first you have to start with all the at-risk youth. Um, that's where, that's where it starts with the youth. You have to change the culture if you want to change anything. Um, definitely more police. I think the city is understaffed by at least 50 police comparable to other cities of our size in our crime rate. That's been proven. The statistics are out there. You can Google it on the internet. Also, these neighborhoods where the highest impact of crime is going on, the police need to focus on those neighborhoods and those neighborhoods only. Yes, if there's a call in the outer neighborhoods, and the outskirts of the city, of course, respond. We want to have the, you know, still the highest impact that we can in the whole city, but in the neighborhoods as a whole, that are the high-impacted crime where all the drugs are and the gangs, that's where the police need to be. We already have the feds here. We have the state police up here every night from Troop D in Middleborough. We need to get it together here with the, with the public safety and hoping for the best Revenue-wise, hopefully we can get these police officers we need. Thank you. Mr. Pena. Public safety. How do you make the streets safer? Well, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, a lot of people, when I, go door, when I go door knocking and I meet the voters, that's, that's number one on people's mind. Uh, what I think is going on right now is a positive step. We're seeing collaboration between Brockton Police, actually inter- agency, not, not only interagency collaboration, but intermunicipality collaboration. Uh, the Brockton Police are now collaborating very closely with the Sheriff's Department, the State Police, the FBI, uh, the DEA. Uh, we need to continue that. But on, on the same token, our police can work very hard to uh, get some, some of the bad guys off the streets, but only to find that they're out eight hours later. And it becomes very frustrating. We have people who don't respect the law. I believe that, uh, as, other, as other, other of my fellow candidates have, have mentioned, community policing is, is the key. Uh, we need to be a little more proactive than reactive. Uh, just arresting people and putting them in, them, putting them in jail is, is, is very reactive. Uh, I've, I've spent a lot of time talking with Officer Liedberg at Coffee with a Cop. Uh, we, need, we need other programs uh, to get out in the community and uh, help people respect our police officers and respect our laws. Okay. Shannon? Same question. Public safety, what can we do to make the city street, streets safer? Yes, thank you. Um, I actually personally went and met with former Captain Gomes and um, Chief Hayden, and I also have a meeting actually with uh, Chief Crowley next week. I have made it one of my priority items to going forward to make sure that I am as in tune with the police that are on the street, that are in the, the building, that are in the cars, uh, as, as much as possible, that are at the courthouses testifying making sure that I understand the things that they need so that we can bring it back to the mayor and bring it back to our funding sources. Um, one thing I think we need to also be very aware of is as we go into this battle, as we do this and as we stand together as residents, that we do not go into this afraid. We have to, if, if our enemy knows that we are afraid, we've already lost this war. So we as people also need to take uh, personal responsibility. If you see something, you say something. If you know that something's going down, you need to report it and say something. Crime has two elements, motive and opportunity. If you know something is going down, we have to stand together and be accountable to one another, and that would help take uh, some of the crime off the streets. Thank you. Susan? Same question. Public safety, what can we do to make the uh, streets safer? 
Public safety, safety in our homes and streets is my number one issue in this campaign. And as I go door to door and meet people all over Brockton, uh, it is the issue without a doubt that comes up. And also so many mothers are telling me how fearful they are for their children, in particular uh, young, young teenagers who don't have enough to do and, and sometimes uh, look into risk-taking behavior to fill their time. Um, so many families here in Brockton have single parents or both parents who work and their children have to be busy and they, they fear for what their children will be getting into if they're not kept busy. Um, uh, interesting, I think we need more police and I think we need better police cruisers to support them. And in fact, in today's Enterprise newspaper, there's an article comparing New Bedford with Brockton uh, since we have similar populations of about 100,000 people. New Bedford has 273 funded police positions. Brockton has 187. We need more police. Okay. Next round of questions I will do and I'm going to start with uh, Adios Pierre. My question for everybody is um, uh, being a city councilor, you are part of government. There's a legislative branch and an executive branch and hopefully you don't have to deal with the judi judicial branch. What would you do personally as a city councilor to have a good relationship between the mayor, the city council, and the school committee? Thank you. Uh, first, I'm a people person. I can work with every, everybody, anybody I can work with you for the benefits of the city. Most of the time, the reason of Brockton suffering from the disconnection or the relationship that, that doesn't exist between the city councilor and the mayor. So I will work with everyone to make sure we bring Brockton back. Because when we divided, the reason I suffer from, from, from that. That means if it's not good for the city, it's not good for me. I will put the city first. And like I said, my, from experience, I've been working for, for various organizations, and I talk to everybody, and I know. From my background, I can work with anyone to make sure the government works as a whole, not personally. Let's leave the, the personal issue behind and work for the benefits of the city. So I believe I can do that, and I'm willing to work with the mayor and the, my colleagues, uh, city councilors. Thank you. Thank you. Next would be Michael Zarel. Same question. Uh, uh, relationships between the council and the mayor, what would you do to uh, enforce them, reinforce them, make them better? I think the biggest thing is making yourself available to everyone. Um, if anybody wants to have a meeting with me or anybody that's a candidate, you need to go and make that happen. You need to sit down, get on the phone, make sure you get back with emails, return phone calls, whatever it takes. Um, as far as school committee, I think that, you know, Brockton still one of the the best urban school systems in Massachusetts. So we need to keep that as one of the best urban school systems in Massachusetts. I have my children in the public schools and I think that that's completely important. As far as the mayor, uh, we don't, as city councilors, we don't have to agree with everything that the mayor does and says, but we do need to work together for the common purpose, which is creating a better Brockton. Thank you. Okay, next would be Shana. And uh, can you repeat the question? The question is, what would you do personally to make sure there's a good relationship, better relationship between any mayor, the city council, and the school committee? Well, um, I, I have a slightly limited perspective, but my first uh, year on the council, my, uh, my colleague in government, Mr. Sullivan, he was our uh, council president, and he initiated um, quarterly meetings and brought everyone together, the mayor, the school committee, the city council, and we had them in uh, the four quadrants of the city to make sure that the residents also had a chance to voice their opinion and, and to get some information uh, heard and to give some information. So um, that's something that I definitely will continue to support uh, in my next term with whomever is the, the next uh, council president. Also, um, I've always made myself available to the mayor, to these, uh, the school committee, if there ever were an issue that um, I could assist on. I've made myself, I, I think, very available um, and that they can come to me and meet with me. I, I met several times with the mayor uh, over the last uh, 19, 20 months and just over about some issues. 
personally, and then just chatting with him sometimes um, in, just in general. I've also attended uh, the school committee meetings, and I plan to do that as well and to continue to do that. We have a capable and a very responsive school committee, and I will continue to support them um, and whoever is mayor and my fellow uh, counselors. Thank you. Thank you, Shana. Uh, Susan Castro. Same question. Do you need me to repeat it? Yes. Uh, what would you do personally to ensure a good working relationship between the city council, the mayor, the school committee, um, regardless of who's in office, uh, mayor, city councilors, or school committee members? Well, first we look to um, the law that governs what we're doing in these roles. And the charter sets out that the executive, the mayor, is in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of the city. And it also sets out the um, obligations and the duties of the City Council. Um, the school committee um, is, uh, is a custodian of the largest line item on the budget of the city and that is of course uh, our school department, our education department. Um, we're, we're obliged to all work together for the betterment of Brockton. Um, I think what's lost on a city level, on a state level, and in Congress, in fact, is the notion that we can disagree without being disagreeable. Um, I think if we all put Brockton first, then, then we, we can go a very long way in solving our differences and helping Brockton to move forward. Thank you. Uh, Gary Keith. Uh, question about relationships between the mayor, the city council, fellow councilors, school committee members. What would you yes. do to uh, make it a good relationship? Well, first of all, if I'm elected to city council at large, uh, I'm a public servant and I do know how to serve as I've been doing that all my life, basically. Um, but with that comes the responsibility from not only the uh, legislative, legislative branch, but the executive branch to where it's, it's back and forth. I should be able to go to his office and say, or who, her office and say, what can I do to help with this situation, vice versa, as well as the uh, school committee also. I should be open to them. I should be at some of their meetings to find out what's going on um, in those um, other uh, branches of government to where basically and let them know that you are accessible to them, uh, that you're there for them if, if the need be. But, you know, basically uh, we have a city here that we're serving. And we have to do whatever it is, and we have to be accessible to each other, you know, to make, move the city forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, same question for Trevor Packard. Um. Uh, so the first time I met Mr. Keith, actually, we were having a discussion outside City Hall, um, and he introduced me to a gentleman that he has known for a while, and he commented on how me and Gary were able to stand there and have a civil discussion. Uh, we didn't agree on everything, but we, we were talking like human beings, and we were respecting each other. Um, and I think that goes a long way that even if we don't agree with what the mayor's doing or with what our peers on the city council are doing, uh, we need to leave the animosity at home. Uh, we can't bicker, we can't quarrel, we need to be respectful of each other and when you're respectful I think it goes a long way, uh, not just showing that your, your peers that you are, you are committed but it also shows the people of Brockton that you are committed um, and that you're willing to set your personal agenda aside and do what's right for the people of uh, uh, Brockton. And I think another thing is, like Mr. Keith touched on, attending every meeting that you, you can attend, whether it's school committee, whether it's city council, whether it's a ward meeting, uh, whether it's a private meeting with someone who was requested to speak with you. Um, if you make yourself um, um, accessible to your peers and the people of Brockton, it'll uh, go a long way in fostering unity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, same question for Scott Hall. Um, uh, relationships between government officials, mayors, city council, school committee members, what would you do personally to make those relationships good? I believe a good start is figuring out what we as a collective agree upon and going forward with that galvanizing initiatives to tackle some of the tough issues that we can all agree upon. Um, transparency is something we need more of in the city. Um, there's an open meeting law uh, forum being held by the Attorney General. Um, there's about four forums coming up. One's in Avon in October. Um, I'm trying to keep my schedule open for that one 
just transparency is a big thing. And I mean, not attacking people. We're not going to come up with a solution if we're attacking each other. We're going to disagree on things. That's attacking is not how we solve problems. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Um, Jury Smith. Um, thank you, Mark, for that question. Um, when I was in my 20s, I ran on a slate um, with other uh, senior and younger teachers uh, for the leadership of the Boston Teachers Union. And at that time, the union was fighting seniority versus affirmative action. So the slate all came together to agree upon the fact that we wanted the Boston Teachers Union to go forward together. So we put a lot of our personal issues aside to move the union forward. And that was an example in my life that I used that I think that we could all put some of our personal issues aside to move Brockton forward on common ground. Thank you. Thank you, Therese. Uh Robert Sullivan. So when I was a junior at Boston College, I was fortunate enough to intern down at D.C. for Brian Donnelly, who was a uh, congressman. Uh, he came from Dorchester, very similar to Brockton. And what Congressman Donnelly said to me, I remember to this day. He said, always do the right thing and always remember the voters uh, of who you represent. Um, I, I, to my colleague, uh, Ms. Barnes, um, I uh, stood before the council when I was sworn in as council president uh, two years ago and I said it's a shame that the city council and the school committee only get together every two years when we're sworn in. It's not right. Uh, so what I did is I did an initiative that was supported 100% by my colleagues. We did quarterly forums. You were there, Mark, as, a, as an elected official for Southeastern Regional. Uh, you know, as council president, when you're the acting mayor, when the mayor is outside of the the confines of Brockton, uh, you, you need to have that duty. I've sat down with Mayor Harrington, Mayor Belzardi, and to some extent Mayor Carpenter. Um, currently, right now, I wouldn't say we have the best relationship, the council and the mayor, due to the fact that the mayor's first of official act was to sue the city council. Uh, but I think you have to remember, it's not just the school committee, it's not just the, the, the superintendent, uh, but it's also the department heads. You have to get together with everybody on a regular basis and get discussions. That's what it's about. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Moses Rodriguez. Thank you, Mark. Um, I, uh, when I first got elected into, uh, as a city councilor, I went to City Hall with an open mind and um, that I, I was basically there to work with anybody that, that was willing to work and make the city a better city. As Bob Sullivan said, when the first action of a mayor is to sue the city council, it basically puts a sour taste in your mouth of some of the things that, you, that we wanted to do together. But, uh, when, but when it's all said and done, we've got to remember one thing. We were put in there to do our jobs. We have a coach, a well-known coach here in New England that claims that, and I believe in that as well because it's something that we need to understand. Our job is to represent the wishes of the people, and it's our job to do the bidding of the people. It's not about me. It's not about the mayor. It's not about the members of the city council. But when it's all said and done, we've got to do what the voters want us to do, and it's to represent their interest in this community and the city to make the city a better city. So it's not about friendships. It's about doing our jobs. Thank you, Moses. Uh, Wynne Farwell, you've been on two of those three bodies of government, and you're seeking to be on a third. What would you do to uh, make sure there's a good relationship? You know, it's, it, it's interesting. I think sometimes public officials forget that they actually hold a job, and that job receives some compensation of benefits. And certainly our fellow Brocktonians should expect and demand that we conduct ourselves with professional courtesy and respect towards one another and towards all of our fellow Brocktonians in the various neighborhoods. Uh, we don't want the foolishness in Brockton that goes down in Washington. Uh, I, for one, am just sick to death of what goes on, and if it were to happen here in Brockton, we'll never solve our problems. We'll never come together as a council. Specifically, though, I will tell you the one thing that, that I live by, and that is if I had a very vehement disagreement with the mayor on a particular issue, or perhaps the school superintendent was coming before us to make a presentation. I'm not going to surprise them with a question. I'm not going to try to embarrass the mayor. I will make sure that I reach out to them in advance. I will tell them where I'm coming from, let them know my concerns, and ask them to bring the appropriate information with them. I think that's what we should do as public officials. We're people first. Treat one another with respect and dignity. Thank you. 
Okay, we are going to go to quicker questions. Um, I, I got the under 30 minute mark and I want to make sure there are 15 minutes left uh, total for everybody to do closing statements. So Kevin is going to uh, start the rapid round questions. It just I can, so I can explain to the folks at home. What these questions are, we're not, we're not looking for someone to give us a full answer. The idea is to see if the candidates can think on their feet and give a straight answer. That's the idea, to give a straight answer instead of doing tap dancing and giving us a long speech for a minute. Uh, so who's first? Is this Susan? Yes. Susan, if you will step up to the microphone. This is going to be back-to-back uh, -back, uh, quick questions, and they're on two uh, things that you're, if you're elected you'll be dealing with uh, come the next two years. Uh, where do you stand as far as the continued fight regarding the proposed power plant? Are you against the project and you want to continue the fight? or for the project, let's build it already. Um, I, I'm against the project. I think it's the wrong location. Uh, 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 you're against it. That's, it. That's all you need to say. Uh, and uh, as far as uh, the purchase of the Aquaria desal plant, for or against? I'm against the purchase under the current terms. Very good. Okay. okay next. next would be Gary Keith. Gary Keith. <coughs> Again, pick one, answer it. I, no explanation, okay? Where do you stand as far as uh, the fight uh, regarding the proposed power plant? Are you against the project or are you for it? For it. Okay. Uh, as far as the, the possible purchase of the Aquaria desal plant, are you in favor of purchase it or against it? I need additional information on that one. Okay. Okay. Go to Trevor Packett. Trevor. First one, uh, in regards to the continued fight regarding the proposed power plant, are you against the project or are you for the project? Let's keep fighting it. Okay. Uh, in, uh, as far as the Aquaria desal plant, uh, there's a, um, are you for or against purchasing it? Absolutely against it. Okay. Okay, Scott Hall. Scott. Scott, what do you stand regarding the fight against the proposed power plant? Uh, continue the fight or uh, for the project? Continue the fight. Okay. Uh, as far as the letter intent for the Aquaria desal plant, uh, are you in favor or against purchasing it? Against purchasing it. Okay, Robert Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan. Well, you guys know I'm 100% against the uh, proposed power plant, and at $88 million, I'm absolutely against the acquisition of, of the Aquaria. Thank you. Thank you for saving me 20 seconds. Okay, <laughs> uh, Moses Rodriguez. You want to save 20 seconds, too? I'm going to save you a lot more than 20 seconds. I'm t totally against the power plant and totally against purchasing a, a water plant for $88 million. Bucks. Okay. Okay, Win Farwell. Mr. Farwell. Mr. Fowle, uh, where do you stand in regards to the continued fight uh, for the proposed power plant? Are you against the project or for it? Thumbs down on the power plant and thumbs down on the desal plant purchase. Very good. Okay. Adios. Mr. Pierre. Yes. Uh, where do you stand regarding the, uh, the fight for the proposed power plant? Uh, are you against the project or for it? I'm against the power plant. Okay. And as far as uh, the letter of intent to possibly purchase the Aquaria desal plant, for or against? I, want to put, uh, I would like to put them on, on the ballot. Okay. Okay. Michael Zarella. Mr. Zarella. First question up, uh, where do you stand regarding the continued fight regarding the proposed power plant? Are you against the project or are you for it? I'm against it, sir. Okay. As far as the letter of intent to possibly purchase the Aquaria desalination plant for or against? I'm against it, but I'd also like to review the contract. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Craig Pina. Mr. Pina. I'll save you some time as well. I'm 100% in favor of the power plant, and I'm again, I'm, I have questions about the price of the desal plant. Very good. Thank you. Shana? I'll also save you time. I stand with my colleagues. I'm against both projects. Okay, and Doris. Doris, if you will. Uh, where do you stand on the continued fight of the proposed power plant? Against the project or for the project? I am for the project, the proposed power plant. Okay. As far as the letter of intent uh, is to purchase the Aquaria desalination plant for or against? Um, like Gary Keith, I would say I would need more information before I answered that question. Okay. Now, I have a question. I got a cue from uh, my floor director behind the scenes. Did I miss somebody? I did not? No, okay. Was a wrap. Fine. Just making sure. Uh, on one of the previous questions. Do you have another rapid question? Yeah, I actually, I actually did. One more, one more rapid question, and that would be, um, should the city, who do we want to go first? Um, actually, I'm going to correct myself, if you, you can let me, yes. bear with me. I did not give Craig Peener a chance to answer that last question, as I was pointed no, no, he out. he did. That was a question before the last question. Ooh. Before the last question. Yes. About relationships. Yeah. 
Do you want to move forward? Okay, I just want to be fair. All right. Okay. So do we want to ask it? Go ahead. All right, so who am I asking? Um, take your pick. Uh, we'll, we'll, go, we'll start with uh, Ms. Smith down the end. Ms. Smith, if you would. Uh, should Brockton have a full-time city council, yes or no? Yes. Okay, very good. Mr. Hall. Full-time city council, yes or no? Um, I would have to yes or no. understand, well... Right now it's a part-time city council. Should there be a full-time city council? I think it's a full-time job. You know, it's going to be, it is a full-time job for Thank everybody you. doing it now. Okay. Trevor? Yes, okay. we should. Are you in favor of, I know the job is a full-time. I've yes, spoken with, with some of the folks. Do you think it should be full-time? Um, it definitely should be a full-time responsibility. Okay. Right. Gary? Mr. Keith. City Council should it be a full-time, yes or no? Most definitely. Okay. I believe it should remain a part-time position. Perfect. Council? It should be officially designated a full-time position. Thank you. Mr. Pina. To do the job correctly, I believe it should be a full-time position. Okay. Mr. Zarella? City Council, should it be a full-time position? Yes, it should be a full-time position. Thank you. Mr. Pierre? Yes, sir, it should be a full-time position. Thank you. Mr. Fowler? Part-time or someone will want a $90,000 salary. <laughs> <laughs> it should be a full-time position. Okay. Mr. Sullivan, wrap things up. No, I think it should main, uh, maintain itself as a part-time position. But you do it for the full time. Thank you. Thank you, folks, very much. Excellent and job. Um, you've all done an excellent job. We've got a lot of good questions in, some a little different than others. We are going to do the closing statements, and we did the drawing uh, prior to this. Uh, the first closing statement goes to Win Pharma. <clears throat> One minute. It really comes down to this with every election. We're important because we're the candidates but the really important people are watching this program. I'd like to have your vote on September 22nd. I'd like to take the past experience which I have and lend it to a position as counselor at large. I understand collective bargaining, municipal finance, school finance, school policy. I understand public safety and I'm willing to work with every person in every neighborhood to make a difference in this city to address the issues of safe streets and playgrounds, a strong and effective school system and having adequate public safety personnel which also includes the fire department we can't leave them out they're a vital public safety service here in the city so I ask for your vote number three in the ballot and I promise you I'll always act in the best interest of the city no special interests just do what's right thank you Wynn. Um next would be Scott Hall I will listen to the people before I move forward with any yay or nay vote. Um, I'm a problem solver. I've made a living out of it. Um, I'm not a good salesman. I'm not trying to, you know, like I sell something to you. I, I'll be honest. I will genuinely care about everybody's perspective regarding every issue we have in the city. Um, I'm number 12 on the ballot, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next would be Gary Keith. Hey, again, I want to thank you for uh, letting us into your homes tonight, and I want to thank you for this forum, uh, putting it together for us. Again, I would love to be your city councilor, and because I believe I bring a passion to it. I ran two years ago, and I didn't do too shabby since then. I actually um, sit on the planning board and I currently sit on the zoning board of appeals. Um, I'm involved and basically I want to serve you because what has been happening here in the city of Brockton has not been working. Okay, the city council that we do have and uh, the whole city council that we have um, and everything else, something is still missing. And it's up to you, the voters, to find the right pieces to put together. You have to put the, a championship team in city hall. And uh, I'm asking you to give me your vote. I'm number 10 on the ballot. Again, if you're happy with what's the way Brockton has been going, then keep what you have. 
But if you're not, then look for the changes that are uh, well deserved. Thank you very much. Okay, next, um, Robert Sullivan. I want to thank you again tonight for, uh, for having this event. Uh, my name is Robert Sullivan, and uh, I'm asking for your vote on September 22nd. I'm the first name on the ballot. I'm first for Brockton always. Uh, I love this city. I love our community. I want to continue to work with you, and more importantly, work for you. Be your voice on the city council. You elected me in 2006, and you've re-elected me four separate times since that time. I want to continue to make Brockton a safe community, a community that everybody should be proud of. We are the city of champions. Please look at my website, uh, www.electrobertsullivan.com, or feel free to give me a call on my cell phone, 508-846-1208. I do that because I want to represent you and continue to really be an advocate and a voice uh, on the City Council. Again, you can vote on September 22nd for four people, uh, quality people here. Everybody should be applauded for putting their name on the ballot. But I want to be one of your four votes. I want to continue to serve as a counselor at large for the City of Champions, the City of Brockton. My name is Robert Sullivan, number one on the ballot. Thank you very much. Thank you. And next will be Moses Rodriguez. Well, thank you, uh, BCA. Thank you, ATD, for doing this. Uh, and thank you, voters at home that are watching us at this time. These elections will be uh, probably one of the more important elections that you have coming up. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get uh, your vote last time, and I ask you again for your confidence, your vote on September 22nd, because I believe it's important to keep in place what's functioning, what's working. We have done some wonderful work in City Hall. We have done some wonderful work representing you and your wishes. It's important that we don't come as professors to profess at you, but to listen to what you're saying and to take your concerns to City Hall and to City Government. We've done that, and I'll continue to do that. I'll, I'll, I have been your voice. I'll continue to be your voice. It's important for Brocktonians to be represented in city government, but it's important for all Brocktonians to be represented in city government. So I, I'm counting on you to send me back for a second term, and I promise you that I'll continue to be that voice for you. Thank you, and good night. Thank you, Moses. Um, next, Craig Pina. Just as I said in the opening, what we were going to see tonight was a bunch of candidates who really care about the city of Brockton. The big choice is who do you think is best equipped to move the, move the city forward and to get, to get the most accomplished. Uh, my name is Craig Pina. I'm number seven on your ballot this on uh, September 22nd. And I want, I, I'm, I'm asking for, for one of your four votes for Councilor at Large. I believe that I have the experience uh, living in the city my entire life, raising my family, working with, with different community organizations to help move the city forward and get the most accomplished. I also, I also uh, believe that, uh, that we, can, we can make Brockton great. We can make Brockton better than it ever has been. Uh, we just need the right people in place uh, to get things moving forward. Thank you, Craig. And next would be Adias Pierre. Thank you, Matt. I want to thank you for watching the show tonight. On September 22nd, I'm asking for your vote. You heard all the candidates. They love Brockton, but I want you to choose somebody that can fight for you, fight with you every day. I, I have what it takes to fight crime in Brockton. Public safety is my first. Homeless, education, after school program. That's why I will fight for you. Drug overdose every day in Brockton. We need to have more treatment place in Brockton. As your next city councilor, I will advocate for those issues and we get results. Please, on September 22nd, I'm asking you for your vote. I'm number five in the ballot. Check my website, check my Facebook. If you want to support me, 774-263-1100. Thank you. Thank you, Arias. Michael Zarella. Residents of Brockton and all concerned citizens, my name is Michael Zarella. I humbly and respectfully ask for your vote September 22nd. I am number six on the ballot. Thank you. Okay, uh, next would be Therese. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you, Kevin. And thank you to the candidates and to the voters at home. Um, my campaign slogan, our campaign slogan is let's help Brockton move forward together. 
all the neighborhoods united, moving Brockton forward. Our agenda, number one, is public safety. Number two is diversity. Number three is pro-business. And number four is education. Public education, which is the bedrock of public equal access. Please look at um, my, I have a Facebook page. Um, my cell phone number is 617-686-3265. And we look for all participation. And please, I want to see you at the polls. Thank you. Voting. Thank you, Doris. Uh, Shana Barnes. Thank you. I'll echo my colleagues and friends in government and thank you two gentlemen for hosting this. Thank you to the BCA Studios for having us here today. Um, and thank you for watching at home and thank you in advance for those that will be listening and watching at a later airing. My name is Shana Marie Barnes. I will be number eight on your ballot on September 22nd. I currently serve as one of your four counselors at large for the city of Brockton. I humbly and respectfully ask that you consider me for your vote again this time. I'm not done. I have things that I want to do. I have things that I want to do with you. I think that some of my ideas, for instance, an idea that um, I've worked on these last two years is the dog park that is actually coming to fruition very, very soon. We have a design. We have um, partners that are, are going to make that happen. And that's going to be a good community, um, a, a community effort that we can do together. Also, another thing that I'm going to propose this year and try to develop is a city hall to go. And it's a mobile city hall van that will allow you to be able to have access to city hall facilities and programs in your neighborhood. So those are just two of the things that I, I plan on doing. And I humbly ask for your vote. Number eight, Shana Barnes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Trevor Packer. Uh, once again, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, thank you to BCA staff. Thank you to all the candidates for being a part of this forum tonight. Um, w once again, people, th their biggest problem with me is my youth and my inexperience. Um, and what I would like to say to that real quick is just don't mistake my inexperience for incompetence. Um, I know what's right for Brockton. I know what's right for the people of Brockton. Uh, my humble roots are planted fir uh, firmly here. I'm the son of a nurse and a Brockton city worker, the grandson of a janitor and a bus driver who also was a 16-year veteran of this city council. Um, I plan to move forward with the Packard legacy, and I hope to move, move Brockton with me and with my colleagues on the um, city council. Um, we need to fight crime. We need additional revenue here. We need to s stop the burden on the property taxes here for your average Joe citizen. Um, vote for me, Trevor Packard, number 11 on the ballot on September 22nd. And uh, thank you again. Thank you, Trevor. And uh, last but not least is Susan DeCastro. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in this debate this evening. My name is Susan DeCastro, and I'm running for the open counselor at large seat on the Brockton City Council. I've lived here 25 years. I'm an attorney. Um, I, I'm a veteran of the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals. And I humbly ask for your vote this evening. This is the first time I've ever run for public office. It's been quite an interesting experience so far. Um, I'm, I, I'm delighted with the reception I'm getting from people. Um, I'm number nine on the ballot, and vote nine for Nicastro. I will work very hard. I'll read almost everything because you can't read everything. I'll ask lots of questions, and I'll be my sassy self, all to benefit Brockton, all to help our city. I love the city of Brockton, and I want to use my talents to help it. Thank you very much. Well, I would just like to thank all of the candidates for putting yourself putting yourself, putting your name on the ballot, uh, whether you want to be in government or you've been in government, I'm on both sides of the table myself. I want to thank Kevin Tachi, my co-host tonight, and I want to thank all of you. I did want to remind the viewers that we had a 13th candidate who chose to not participate in the debate, did an opening statement and left. Okay, so I just want to let you know we didn't ask him to leave. Okay, good luck to all the candidates. Keep watching cable, keep listening to WATD radio. We'll have all the candidates for you in the upcoming months. We'll do full election coverage and you'll get to see all the candidates on TV as well, one at a time. On behalf of all the crew, the staff, the volunteers, and the board of directors of Brockton Community Access, and my colleague Kevin Tachi, thank you for joining us. And make sure to vote.